Uh, my name is Alan. I was in the Special Forces for several years uh, in two reconnaissance commando. When the unit was disbanded, of course, we all went into our civil life, but we still held a strong bond with the um, Special Forces unit per se, even, the, even the, the permanent force members. My career started in 1974 doing selection and we, it, the unit was disbanded in 1986, so that was my span of experience that I had with them. Uh, in leaving reconnaissance commando for quite a while, um, I was a civilian employed in, in civilian fields, but came across a self-defense system called Krav Maga, and I've developed a very strong bond with the, with the system itself, very strong bond with the people who train in Israel, and a very strong bond with my students. Uh, my students and I work very well together, and I learn as much from them as what they learn from me. In the whole situation of self-defense, and everyone has said this over here, situal, situational awareness is absolutely important. Situational awareness is the part that's going to keep you out of trouble without getting into tangle with the criminal that wants to attack you and without getting involved in the law and the legal aspects should something happen towards you. So if you are aware of your environment and you see what's happening and you avoid it, that is the best thing to do. In general, what happens is people go out and they do lectures on situational awareness and they make a packet of money just reiterating and repeating what they've heard about you have to have an alarm system, you have to be careful of who's walking around, you have to do a whole bunch of security things around your house, around your farm, around your car, wherever you move. And in general, that's a very stressful situation or um, environment to be in, an emotional environment to be in because you're under stress all the time. In Krav Maga we have certain zones that we operate in. We have a white zone where we're in a completely protected environment where we don't have to worry about any cr crime or criminals coming in there. However, that can be breached at any time immediately. We have a yellow zone where you're slightly more cautious about where you are. So if you leave the front door of your home you are in the yellow zone because your property might have been invaded. When you get onto the street with your car or when you're walking, you're in a yellow zone. You have to be aware of the situation. And they carry on like this. And we have the white, yellow, orange, red, black zones that we have. So white is safe, yellow is cautious, orange is more cautious because you seem to see something dangerous. Red, you see danger and it's heading towards you and black, you're in a fight. So those are the sort of zones that we have. And to live in that worry about what zone am I in now and things like that, it is stressful. So what we do in the self-defense community in our system, in, in our IKR South Africa, is we condense the situation and we see in my environment, let me set a benchmark of how people are behaving for that particular environment. So if I'm stepping out of my house, does everything look normal? There's a guy sitting on the pavement, he looks suspicious, I haven't seen him ever before, and he really doesn't belong there, and there's no reason for anyone to sit there, I have to be cautious about that. I don't have to be paranoid and get my pistol out and do all sorts of funny things, I have to be cautious about that. If I step out of the house or I drive and he starts stepping up and he picks up something, now I've got to be extra cautious. Now I'm in the orange zone, I see something dangerous happening. As I drive past him, I see him moving in a certain way. Now I'm in the red zone. The danger is coming towards me. Uh, I need to take some care. If he's suddenly in my window and he's breaking the thing, now I'm in the black zone. Now I have to do some fighting. So in the main, in 20 seconds, something like that could have happened. So I've set the benchmark. I see he's over there. I'm cautious. What should I do? Well, don't get into the car. Stay one side. Don't get involved. Wait till he moves away or call someone to inquire and get him to move away over there. So that's the situational awareness that we have to set as a benchmark. If I'm going from here into a mall and a shopping mall and um, I set a benchmark there, I park my car here, I see all the cars are parked, I see people walking up and down with trolleys, but I see four guys with hoodies over there, it might be a hot day, it might be winter, but their hoodies are on and they're, it's abnormal, they're not pushing trolleys, they're not shopping, they're just there talking amongst one another. It seems suspicious. So I need to see what can I do. If I can't get away from there and I have to do shopping, I would go to security and say, those four guys, they look a little bit suspicious. The, he might say to me, no, no, they're clean as they're waiting for someone or we know about them. Then I, I'm cool with that. If, they, if he says, no, well, we, let me go and have a look, I'm 
cool with that too. You see, something has been done, situational awareness. I don't get it there and approach. I send someone else to do that. I'm not looking for trouble. I want to avoid trouble. And this is the benchmark we need to set wherever we go. And it's a quick thing. You just go see oh, how are people behaving. Something strange will pop up. And you will see, wait a minute, that's strange. That's not good. Let me do something about it now. Let me get into my car and go. If I'm at the, um, my shopping center, there's a place they call the Yard of Ale where there's a lot of drinking and socializing taking place. Last night there was a, a, a particular confrontation and um, a guy was driving up a one way and I saw this and I could take care of it and I went and I took care of it and we got the guy to drive away but I saw what it was, there was something strange happening over here. I went there on my own and I did something about it. I could do something there. If it were two people having a fight, running out of the bar and now it's a street fight onto the parking lot, things like that, I don't get involved in that. I get the security to come and get involved with the fight over there. It's got nothing to do with me. I don't want to die because I thought I was a good guy and let me step in and help. It has nothing to do with me. Let me get into my car. I haven't even bought the milk or the bread or whatever it is I wanted to go. Let me get into my car and drive away from that over here. And this is the attitude that one should have. Everyone should have. Set a benchmark and live according to that particular benchmark. It's going to save you um, living a life of stress. You'll be in the yellow zone all the time. And if you see something orange happening over here, there's danger, avoid the danger. If the danger is coming towards you, you need to do something. Get away very quickly or confront the, the threat. Usually a confrontation itself, hey, I'm watching you, will also dissipate the, the situation and you could order. So that's the situational awareness that we work on to make things a little bit better for us and easy for us. And if you practice it a lot and have fun doing it, it's, 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 it's serious. But it's nice to be able to spot these things and say, hey, my sweetie, let's just leave this place over here. Or she, my wife, will see it and say, that looks a little bit funny, Alan. And I say, yo, you're quite right, but to me, you're a little bit, I uh, don't say this to her, I think you're, you're a little bit over worried, but I'll take care of it and I'll, she'll work with me as to what I decide to do. So I'm the, the, the fighter. I'll say, well, darling, get into the car, I'm going to go handle the situation, which won't happen. <laughs> I say, sweetheart, you're right over here, let's get in the car, let's go shop somewhere else. And that, that's where you're going to stay safe. Wherever you, you come up to a traffic light, a robot. You come up to the robots and you stop over there and you see something walking in between the two cars looking left and right, left and right. There's danger coming. You're going to wait and see where, how far down the line from the robot am I? What are my escape points over here? Leave a one and a half car, they say one car, leave one and a half, two car gap between you and the next guy. Leave a big gap so the guy behind you is going, toot toot, move forward, toot toot, move forward. Just say, wave your hand and say, oh, I'm sorry, leave it the two gap because you need that space to move. So you're thinking ahead of time, and people say, oh, only one car's length, rubbish, double it, and then you have more space to move. Because if someone comes over here, you're going to move forward two car's length. Now he runs after you, now he moves backwards two car's length, now he's in front of you, now you could do something. Ride him over, bump into the, another car, you, you have a particular point, you hoot. Get onto your hooter. Do things like that if you are in trouble. Of course, now you're in the black zone. So you saw it was orange. It was coming towards you. It's red. Now it's here by your window. It's a black zone. You have to do something about it at that particular time. And I don't say it's going to happen, but the chances of it happening in here in Johannesburg are good. Even in the, the other cities and towns around the place, the chances are good that it's going to happen. Uh, and, and that's the situation. where It's a game you can play when you're bored in the car. It's, uh, it happened to one of my students last week where he was coming from university through to training here and um, he was in, Mayfair, in the Mayfair area at a robot that was red. Doing what all good um, drivers do, it was a red robot, no traffic anywhere. He stops at the red robot. Of course it's a red robot. He looks in his rear view mirror and he sees two guys walking down the road towards him. One breaks away and moves to this side of the road, the other one keeps on continuing. He said, this isn't so cool, let me just put my car in here, there's no traffic, let me just drive on. Situational awareness. He's practicing what he's learning. He's an instructor, he's practicing what he's preaching. That is what we need with, with everyone as far as situational awareness. And I think we're on top of the game as far as that perspective of situational awareness is concerned. I've had a lot of my special forces friends give talks on, special, on situational awareness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just one of those things that everyone says. And it sounds good. Everyone says yes, yes, yes. And they go home and they do nothing. 
They don't do anything. They don't up their alarm system. They don't keep their dogs in house. They don't treat their. They don't train their animals not to take food from strangers. They do all sorts of crazy things that they've just been told don't do. And and that's it. But this that we do over here, we make it a game. It's a lacquer game. It's not an expensive game, but it's a nice game to play when you are out in the street to make sure that you will collect your pension at the, at the end of your working years.